I'm Dane Rose, and I wanted to introduce uh, what this project is, uh, as well as what it isn't. And uh, to do that, I'll, I'll look at it from a couple of different angles. Uh, I'm convinced that it is both the most selfish and selfless thing that we can do in our culture to understand what trauma is, prevent it, and respond to it. And I'm convinced of that from observing the cost of sustained background chronic trauma in my own life and the roughly 60% of my life energy from birth that has gone into various forms of pain and trauma management. Uh, we as individuals often represent fractally the microcosm of these large social uh, patterns and they are as destructive to the country and to the planet as they are for us as individuals. Uh, secondly, I am in no way a professional and feel somewhat kind of compassionately passionate that money not be a motive around traumatic repair, meaning it is so costly to the individuals involved, the families involved, the economy and the culture that it is frankly insane. Uh, if not downright cruel to ourselves, to each other, to not do everything that we can to respond and address uh, the traumatic epidemic in a culture that is traumatically illiterate. Uh, thirdly, I'm a white 44-year-old American male um, that has New Age leanings, has, you know, grew up in a hippie household where the externals were, were often quite, you know, politically correct with the organic food and the passive solar home and the trauma and the abuse and the PTSD because we're a very surface culture. And so if you look good on the outside, uh, we ignore what's going on on the inside. Um, and the trauma that I'm addressing uh, and referencing in, in, in this kind of work is a combination of spending about a thousand hours in the last four years reading and learning and, and, and exploring the traumatic terrain that I found myself in, uh, you know, and touching on sexual abuse, abuse with psychedelic uh, drugs, therapeutic abuse, uh, and uh, physical uh, abuse as well as shame. I experienced all of that to some degree in childhood. It was masked over as it is in many kind of new agey or, or religious contexts as love, the, which is very difficult because the abuse, when it's relabeled, it's like taking a bottle of poison and calling it love, um, well, everyone wants love, so you drink the bottle, and you don't fear the bottle. But if it's labeled poison, you keep a healthy distance. Uh, many abusers don't want to feel bad for the abuse that they dish out, and so they just cross out the poison and put love there and uh, dish it out. This is harder to repair from. So a lot of the work that I've been doing has been parsing out what is the actual impact of this behavior? And does that support a healthy definition of love? And the, the definition that I like to use is Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. To be loving to someone, regardless of how you feel about them or whether you're in lust with them, etc., you help them to survive. You participate in a way that uh, ensures their survival. And you don't kill them. Uh, you increase the security of their survival. Uh, you encourage them to have a savings account. Uh, you, 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 know, you, you brainstorm ways to get through problems. You help them increase their security around physical survival. Uh, you get to know them. You help them know themselves in a way that facilitates love and belonging. And 
you are in a state of love and belonging. You are in a context of love and belonging. If people know you and want to know you, if people care about you, if they treat you the way that they would want to be treated, if they were willing to make a sacrifice to protect your survival, your security, you know you're in an environment in which you are loved uh, and uh, which you belong. And when they facilitate your well-being, through self-esteem, helping you become the person you want to be, developing your gifts, uh, supporting you in bringing those gifts back into the culture to, to restore and enrich the culture uh, and become the best version of yourself. When someone is doing that, intending to, and it's working, meaning I'd like to support you and be loving one, and it's actually working, yes, I am liking myself better, I am growing, then you've got someone who is actually loving you. When someone is molesting you, when someone is harassing you, when someone is uh, threatening and cajoling you for short-term addictive agendas of their own, uh, it's not love, regardless of what it's called. Um, and so, uh, Having had this relabeling in childhood, one of the things that happens is the abuse tends to repeat uh, because it's mislabeled. Everyone wants love, and it's called love, and so you don't have a defense against it. You've got confusion, um, and often abusers and abuse survivors pair up together because they sense a familiarity, and so the, the abuse keeps happening until it becomes conscious. And that's one of the biggest things this project is about. No one in my entire life, be it a therapist, uh, be it a parent, be it a teacher, be it a friend, be it a partner, be it a government, no one in my entire life has sat down and said, this is abuse for this and this reason, this isn't. This is what great friendship and support looks like. This is what crappy manipulation looks like. This is this, this is this. And, and just break it down in a way that allows self-love and navigation, that allows us to recognize the patterns that take us where we want to go. Um, and and this, this is very sad because it's not personal, meaning a large percentage of this country no one has ever sought, sat down and told them the most basic things about uh, living a productive and, and healthy life. Uh, and that's an absolute tragedy of self-loathing because we as individuals then grow up in a dysfunctional, in a mislabeled, in a crazy and traumatic country. Uh, and it's no fun. It's no fun. And so uh, this is not a professional thing coming from professional training. This is one human being that says enough and since I've got to live in this amount of hell to the degree that I do moving and transitioning you know through this traumatic terrain, um, I'm gonna document it. I'm gonna share the research. I'm gonna share what works for me and if it works for you, use it. If it doesn't, throw it out. That's why I kind of begin with, you know, I'm my generation. There may be other things going on for, uh, for younger and older generations that I'm not the best voice for. Become that voice. Participate in the change towards a trauma literate culture, towards an emotionally literate culture, towards a relationally literate culture. Because when we make that transition, we go from uh, systemic sociopathic behavior to systemic empathic behavior because it's good for the environment, it's good for your bank account, it's good for your body, it's good for the psyche, it's good for the soul. There is no one who loses as we become and transition towards a trauma literate culture.